Before we go on researching Atlanta's nicest cocot company, I have to take a digression here, and I wanted to talk about this somewhere anyway. In the late 1970s, the Bell System began to do things in response to the Blue Box crisis, and I can hardly blame them because all the information was being published. People who just didn't get the coolness of the system were starting to use Blue Boxes, so they had to do something. There was a system they implemented in three different places. The first place we saw it was in the crossbar tandem CAMA system. Ben noticed it from his house. He would dial a long-distance call, and if that long-distance call went off-hook and on-hook, the length of answer flash that you get if you blow 2600 from a blue box, there would be a noticeably loud click. The volume on the line would get softer, and you could tell that some device had just been attached to the trunk that was listening for something. Well, it was listening for MF tones. Here is a recording made from Ben's house in 1978, where you can hear this device in operation. The device has been inserted on the trunks into or out of the Forest Hills crossbar tandem. Something extremely strange and of concern. Listen to this. On this first attempt, the device did not kick in for some reason, but that's good because you'll hear what a normal trunk reset should sound like. Ben is going to blow 2600, you'll then hear the trunk do the handshake, and here is what the handshake should sound like without this funny device kicking in. Clunk, cheap, tick? The tick is the anti-fraud device which is listening for MS. After a certain number of seconds, the device will cut out, and you'll notice that the recording will get louder. That tick is normal. That's the Philadelphia 4M putting on the recording. We're sorry, but because of a temporary equipment condition, your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try again? This is a recording. Two one five two. We're sorry, but because of a temporary equipment condition, your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try again? This is a recording. Two one five two. Now that. We're sorry, but because of a temporary equipment condition, your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try again? This is a recording. Two one five two. See how the recording got louder? That thing really loaded down the line. It sure wasn't subtle. Here's an excerpt from another recording Ben made that day. At first, the recording is muted because the device is on, and you can hear it cutting out and the recording getting louder. We're sorry, but because of a temporary equipment condition, your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try again? This is a recording. Five one six nine. Sorry, but because of a temporary equipment condition... It has to be a recorder. It lowers the transmission. You heard it when it got louder when it went away? The second place where this was implemented was the TSPS system. This was an ESS system that was used for zero-plus dialing and was responsible for handling long-distance calls from coin phones. 
By installing a device like this in the TSPS, they were able to catch pretty much all of the blue box use from almost all coin phones. I never heard that one in operation, and I don't know what it sounded like. The third implementation was a thing called SIGI, which is short for signaling irregularities, and it worked on number one ESS. We first heard about SIGI from Joe and Grecia in February 1983. It looked for a wink back. And where do you find this system other than on TSPS? Uh, EFS. EFS? When it goes on the back side or it goes on the trunk side of the, of the switch? Uh, about on EFS, about a second after a wink back is seen, the uh, exchange, uh, the EFS switches in a high impedance MF receiver. And it records the MF digits dialed and prints out a uh, complete AMA record showing the number called, the number calling from, and the digits MF. And also it prints out Bs if you talk into the MF register. It's Bs just a separated digits. It prints out the letter B. What does it do with SF? Uh, nothing. Is there a similar thing in TSPS? Yeah. And it prints out on a teletype in security. The TSPS thing does. Both of them does. TSPS comes out on channel 6 of the TSPS. And so we affectionately call it channel 6, although I forget what TSPS calls it. But the EFS is called SIGI. Security then could actually go down there and catch the guy on his first MF call from a payphone if he talked long. Yeah, uh, the first one he ever made in his life, you know. It is almost totally soft then. It's programming in the ESS software. Yeah, this, which is in an MF receiver, if the supervision off -hook, the off hook time is less than the charge time. It's an add-on feature in 1E6 generic and later. In order to switch that in, shouldn't it have to make some sort of audible sound to do it? It does make an audible sound on ESS about a second afterwards. And on TSPS, it makes the audible sound about 200 milliseconds. Is it a lot like an operator verifying? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Because it's, it has to make, you know, number one ESS has just got to make sense. <laughs> it's got to make a sound to connect you to nothing. The interesting thing is, it won't do it on three-way. Oh, no. After getting the news from Joe, I decided to see whether my local ESS office had SIGI. To demonstrate it for the tape, I first called a friend who had a crossbar 5 number locally and I asked him to answer his phone by just picking up and hanging up. I knew that if Siggy was going to be triggered, that would trigger it. First, here's calling into his line on a local call where he answers and hangs up quickly. And nothing has happened. That's because it's a local call. Here's dialing that same friend with a 1404 in front of his number. This puts the call through the long distance network even though it's a local call. Again, he will answer the phone by picking up and hanging up. And if Siggy is going to come in, that should trigger it. <laughs> Hello, Siggy. And Siggy's now listening for MFs. Now, in 1983, when Siggy first appeared, it actually was printing out any MFs that it got on a teletype in the security office. But by 1986, they had had a change of heart. I don't know what happened. Probably lots of false alarms. But by 1986, Siggy had been modified so that it would still come on the line if it saw the flash on a long-distance trunk. It would click on, but then all it took was three MF tones, and you would just get cut off to a new dial tone. So anytime Siggy would trigger, we could just take our touch tone pad and dial 333. That would make Siggy think it was hearing an MF7 three times, because the touchstone 3 is close in frequency to the MF7, and the line would go back to dial tone. In 
In 1986, Siggy was no longer printing out at the security office, I don't think. They had apparently decided that all Siggy was good for was preventing blue box use by cutting a person off every time it heard a flash followed by three MF tones. Now that you know that, you'll understand a joke that's coming up in this recording. So anyway, back to the research on Atlanta's most tariff-compliant cocot. In this next segment, all I'm doing is calling the telephone number that the NTS cocot phones use to reach the NTS operators. When someone dials zero or a long-distance call, the phone calls this number. This number answers with a dial tone. The phone puts in its ID and the number the person is calling. After that, the operator comes on and takes it from there. Now, one of the things that makes this tape very confusing if you weren't there is that the operator has two ways of dealing with calls. On this tape, we get the operator to try to connect us with directory assistance a lot. And for that, she uses a telephone line whose number is 5243861. That phone line is subscribed to some alternative long distance company. We don't know what company it is, but we've been trying to find out. Unfortunately, a high percentage of the calls dialed on that phone line that go out through that company end up with that company just giving us a useless dial tone. It's a mistake. I swear we have nothing to do with it. It's just a problem that that long distance company has. Fortunately for NTS, only special things like directory assistance were completed through that telephone line. Regular long distance calls, as we find out in a few minutes, are handled through a direct trunk from the NTS PBX to a long distance company. And the direct trunk works a lot more often than the long distance company does from that line. So fortunately for NTS, customers are only getting that inappropriate dial tone when NTS tries to give them directory assistance. I need to explain that now because there are just too many darn dial tones on this tape. And now back to 22286. Well, here we go. The ID was 00010060068 and then 10 digits. So, let's try it. Uh, yeah, I want to pay for it here. Mama, sir? Okay, that'll be a dollar eighty-five for the first three minutes, please. All right. Oh, do you have the number I'm calling? Yes, I do. Two one three fifty five five one two one two. Yeah, that's directory assistance. Shouldn't that be fifty cents? Oh, or sorry, sixty cents. Sick. That's strange. You need, okay, hang up and just. Okay. Wait a minute. All you need to do is just hang up, or not hang up, but put your sixty cents in, and I'll go ahead and. Connect you. Oh, okay. Okay. Don't hang up. Just go Their long distance company doesn't work. <laughs> that you know that dial tone? That's that's standard procedure with that long distance company. It just doesn't work. And you know why the phones don't allow five five five? Well, because the long distance company doesn't go there, I guess. No, because it's a different rate. 
That's why. And for a lot of area codes, they have only one rate. I, I called 555 through their system uh -huh. in Los Angeles. It wanted $1.85 because all 213 is $1.85. That's why the telephone itself won't allow 555. Do you think, do you, do you, are you reading more into that than is really there? Do you think that's not just an accident? Well, if the phone did accept 555, the operator would ask for $1.85. Oh, 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 I see. I see. Yeah, so you're what you're saying. Yeah. All right. I didn't understand. So let me, uh, I'll call you back in a minute. I'm going to try. I'm going to confront them about the problem. Oh, in fact, well, hold I on. I think I need to hear all this. <laughs> you, you, you might like this. Don't make too much noise, I'm recording. Can I help you? Oh, wrong operator. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to get directory assistance in Los Angeles. You tried to connect me before. Mark. Well, I got a dial tone. Okay, at area code 213? Right. Oh, okay, just a moment, sir. I'm sorry. Just hold. Hallelujah, for L.A. Thank you. You have a number for... Oh, wait, never mind. Cancel the call. You don't want a listing, sir? Yeah, it's, it's too late. Amplified, huh? Five, two, four, three, eight, six, one. Nice operator didn't ask me to put more money in, I guess. Well, they probably are trained to not do that. Yeah, it's no big deal. But it really, it, it wasn't my fault. It got a dial tone. Well, how did you get it that time, I wonder? Just luck. Now let's see if we can get 700 to work. That's what the trouble was before. That's why 700 gave me a dial tone. Tone. Now, it hasn't souped, but I can make the line reset. Notice how I do it. <laughs> yes, I used Siggy to cut me off. <laughs> I, I flashed an MF and got Siggy going on their line. <laughs> This drunk. Do a little louder.
Well, that's probably their amplifier responding to the partial dial recording drunk. Let's see. Well, I guess this is all we're going to get. Yes, it certainly is. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm really more impressed with this, even though they're fucked up right now, than with any of the other things. I mean, the phones are, you know, they're, they're true to the, the ringing, you know, the, the, the tones all work, the amplification is good, I and mean, they've, they've got some procedural problems. Well, there are two problems. The operators are poorly trained, and their long-distance company has... Uh, fails regularly. Those are the problems. Yeah, but those are fairly easy to fix. Yeah. That, those, you know, somebody had more brains that set this up than the guy in the checkered suit selling the coke hunts. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really impressed with it. Well, anything, you know, they listen to the call going through. Do you know anything that rings a while so we can complete a successful call? Uh, what do you mean rings a while and answers? Yeah, and then hangs up. <sighs> well, you're going to have to put money in. Well, that's no problem. <laughs> I've got money. <laughs> Let's see, how much money have you got jingling around in your pocket there? Oh, quarters and quarters and quarters. <laughs> as many as it, many as it takes. <laughs> Operator, may I help you? Yeah, now I got it. I'm going to pay for it here. All right, so just a moment, please. All right, so it's $1.80 for the first three minutes. All right. All right, sir, please hold on. Try and call for you. All right, sir, there's a recording on. Do you want to leave a message on the recording? Uh, yes. All right. Uh, I didn't know if you did or not. Hold on just one moment. John Smith, room three and three quarters. went through a different way. This call went through a different way than directory assistance. So they must have some more direct way of doing it through the PBX. Get this. When I actually completed the call, uh -huh. they didn't call it the same way they called directory assistance. It 
seemed to go directly out from the PBX because when that trunk unsouped, it won't reset. My call to five two, you know, to Cortland Street unsouped when the trunk unsouped. In other words, the uh, they got some sort of supervision on their toll trunks. That PBX, whatever they're connecting me through, has direct trunks to that carrier, apparently. Well, that's not that... Well, see, like what we've got, if you order an MCI watch line, you can get supervision on the thing. Yeah, apparently that's the deal. So, it seems like you can only dial on their dial tone if they gave you direct resistance or something. And good luck. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, on the last call that I made, uh -huh. she didn't collect my money. <laughs> she said, that's a recording on that number. Do you want to leave a message? And I said, yeah. And she then called it back and didn't collect my money. I wonder if that's their policy. I can't imagine. Wouldn't that be something if it were? I doubt it. I mean, they're just so inconsistent. I'm going to try an 800 call. Operator assisted. The 800 call goes straight out from the phone, but I'll tell the operator I was having trouble. Yeah, I can't get through to 800-325-3535. Okay, sir, that was 325. Right, 3535. All right, sir, please hold and I'll connect that for you. Sheraton Reservations, this is Wendy. May I help you? Yeah, you don't happen to have a Sheraton in Blue Ball, Pennsylvania, do you? One moment, I'll check for you. <laughs> no, sir, we do not. All right, just checking. Thanks. Thank you. That's the PBX's nine line, in effect. By the way, if you call the number, they uh, answer sometimes, but they don't seem to know how to handle the call. <laughs> well, I bet not. <laughs> it's, you know, on this display field, it's, you know, God knows what it's saying. I'm going to try zero plus an area code. Probably that carrier will just give us dial tone again. Nice recording, huh? You, you switch off of AT&T, trusting in this new phone company. AT&T says, don't do it. They're not reliable. They're not like us. I had to call Phoenix, so I'm using this other long-distance company. I dialed the wrong number. I got this guy in What? 
Is this Phoenix? No, you reached Fiji. I dial again. Fiji again. What are you kidding? So I call the operator for credit. She said I'd have to talk to customer billing. I said, AT&T operators gave me instant credit. She said, you are not dealing with AT&T. And then the first time you need operator assistance, what do you get from your new phone company?